after a week long break, the UFC is back. And, you know, it's a decent card they've brought out. But not not the greatest main event, I won't lie. Like, it is a weird one, but still should be a good card. So I'm looking forward to it. So let's start off with the first fight of the night, which is Montella De La Rosa versus JJ Aldridge. Uh, I'm going to be taking JJ Aldridge in this fight. I just think she's just a... I don't know. I just think she's she's actually not bad. She was losing to <clears throat> Na Young, which was a bit of a, you know, that was a little odd. But she did end up dominating in that second round, if I'm remembering that fight correctly. Also a pretty quick turnaround. You know, a month and a half. She's been active. And Montana De La Rosa, on the other hand, you know, lost to Tatiana Suarez isn't anything bad. Neither is Macy Barber. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Something about J.J. Aldrich. You know, she made it competitive with Aaron Blanchfield. And I do like to see that out of a fighter. So I do think I do think J.J. Aldrich is going to get this one done. Uh, I'll probably... I'll go by decision. You know... Yeah, I'll, I'll go... I think she'll get this one done by decision. But it should, should be a good fight. You know, J.J. Aldrich is decently entertaining for women's mixed martial arts. But anyway, moving on, we have Nate Maness versus Matias Mendoza. Now, this one's really interesting because, to the best of my knowledge, Matias has never fought at flyweight, and this fight is at flyweight. He doesn't look like he's... Like, I don't know why he's going down. Like, I really don't know why he's moving down. Like, this fight is like two bantamweights who should probably still be fighting at bantamweight. Like... Nate, I don't know why Nate Maness decided to go down to flyweight. Like he, I, I generally think he looks like an alien at that weight class. Like I'm not even like being rude or anything, but when he was cutting down to 125, his head, like he, he generally looks like an alien when he's dehydrating himself to make flyweight. I don't know why he's putting himself through this. Uh, but he's not a bad fighter, you know. He beat Tony Gravely. He beat like he's got a few wins. He beat Johnny Munoz who isn't, like, a horrible fighter. He also used to be a lightweight as well, which is interesting. Uh, so now he's a flyweight. That's definitely very interesting to me. But I I think I'm going to go... It's tough. Man, Dosa's not bad, man. Like, losing to Javid Basharat's nothing to be ashamed of. Ja- Javid Basharat's actually a really good fighter, in my opinion. 14-0, and, and he... He just sort of puts on, like, masterclasses on his opponents. And, yeah, he put a masterclass on Mendoza. I'm going to... I think I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Mendoza here. Mat- Mateus. Yeah, Mateus Mendoza. I don't know why I said that. I was like... Yeah, I think I think his name is pronounced Mendonca. Bon- I don't know. But anyway, getting on to the point. I think, I think he's going to... I think he's going to get this one done. I think he's going to I think he's going to TKO Nate Menez. I don't trust Nate Menez's chin at flyweight. Now maybe uh Mandoka will be the same. But I I, I think he he's, you know he's not that big. I'm sure he can make bantamweight uh, flyweight healthily. You know he weighed in 134 in his last fight at bantamweight. He does look like a skinny dude, so I think he will be able to make the weight. And I think he's very powerful. I think he's a very powerful guy. If you look at his record, all KOs. And he like actually flatlines people as well. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with him, but Nate Menez is live in this fight. This isn't like a one sided fight in my opinion. Nate Menez is actually really good. He's got really good boxing, but <sighs> fuck. He does have really good boxing. You know, this is actually, this is one of the harder fights to break up in this card, in my opinion. Plus, he's really big. Like, he's tall. He's got a long reach. Fuck, I didn't think I'd be breaking down Nate, Nate, Nate Menez versus Matthias Mandoka so much in this on this card. I didn't think this would be the one to stump me a little bit. Oh, only half an inch. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Mendoka. I'm gonna go with Mendoka, but I'm not confident in it. And then moving on, 
we have Kanako Morata versus Vanessa Domopoulos. I don't even know who... Call me a casual, but I don't even remember who Kanako is. She hasn't fought for two years. Okay. Okay. I was like, who the fuck's this? She beat Randa Marcos. You know, Marcos did beat Carla Esparza, so that's not a bad win. She's Japanese. Don't know where she trains out of. She is a wrestler. And Verna Genaroba, she lost to her by shoulder injury. So not even like a legitimate loss. You know, she, she looks like she's a bit of a beast going for a record. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go with her over Vanessa Domopoulos. I think, yeah, I think she'll get this one done against Vanessa Domopoulos. You know, I think, I think Domop Domopoulos has sort of hit her ceiling. You know, she's got some wins, but, you know, lost to Carolina Colo Wicks. And... You know, going to a split decision with Young Yu Fry is not a good look, in my opinion. You know, Yin Fu Yu Fry, sorry, has lost quite a lot of fights. And her only last win was against Ashley, Ashley Yoda, who is quite literally like, what, 8-8? Eight and eight? So, that's... She's still in the UFC? She's fighting on this fucking card? No, she's fighting on next week's card. What the fuck? How is Ashley Yoda still in the UFC? She's 8-8. Eight and eight. Yeah, okay. Sorry, uh, that, that shocked me a little bit. I didn't didn't realize they let 50-50 records in the UFC. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go with Kanuko in this fight. I think she'll beat Vanessa Demopoulos. Plus... Uh, Kananuko, much younger, and she's been out for a while, but she is much younger, so I'm sure she's been making some improvements during that time. So yeah, I'm going to go with her to get this one done by decision. And then we got Johnny Munoz Jr. versus Ori Leng. It's literally, that's just his name on here. They they got rid of his, his full name. I think he's, wasn't it? I don't even know. I'm not even try, but... So yeah, it's just Ari Lang, the Mongolian murderer. Pretty hard uh, nickname. So he lost to uh, Zahabi by KO in like the first round, first minute. But, you know, that, that fight has nothing on this fight stylistically, you know. He doesn't have to worry about getting KO'd by Johnny Munoz Jr., in my opinion. I don't think Johnny Munoz is striking. is really that good. Uh, he looks very awkward on the feet, and he is a he is a jujitsu guy. You know, we've seen him against Daniel Santos. He kept flopping on the ground, trying to like, you just pull the Oliveira on Oliveira's teammate, like pretty much. But yeah, he he worries me a bit on the feet. If I'm being honest, plus he's not the most durable guy either. He does have. He did. I was gonna say he's got some good wins, but he really doesn't. You know, Ludovic Shulin isn't the greatest fighter. Jamie Simmons was literally just added into the UFC for somebody for Gika Chikenzi to use his target practice on short notice, so all respect. But yeah, I think I'm gonna go with Ori Lang here. He's no he hasn't like he's he's not a bad fighter and at least he's like destroying the guys he fights. You know, losing to Cody Durden in a very close fight is there's nothing to be ashamed of in that fight. And I think he almost knocked out Jeff Molina, if I'm remembering correctly. So he's not like a bad fighter anymore. I think he can KO Johnny Munoz. So I'm going to go with this fight. I'm going to go with Ori Lang by KO. I think he's going to KO Johnny Munoz in the first round. But we'll see how his grappling defense holds up in this fight. But yeah. Then we got Chris Gutierrez versus Montel Jackson. So I'm going to be going with Montel Jackson here. I just think, I think this guy's really good. This guy's really underrated. Fucking powerful as well. He's got the biggest hands at Bantamweight, I believe. Like he actually, his hands are massive. He has heavyweight hands. Like, And that's not like a euphemism for his power or anything. I mean, he generally his hands are heavyweight sized. 
And this guy's really powerful. He just ran through Rani Yaya. He beat he beat Julio Arkek, who's like I rate him pretty highly. Beat the absolute shit out of JP Buys. It was really hard to watch. Poor JP Buys. Knocked out Jesse Strader in the first minute. You know, he just he is a really, really good guy in my opinion. He's just you know, you're losing to Brett Johns, nothing to be ashamed of. Brett Johns, nineteen and three. Now, so he's he's a good fighter and a massive, massive bantamweight. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with Montel Jackson. I'm pretty confident here. You know, Gutierrez is good as well, but I don't know. Like he he has you know he's had some good fights, but I do I do think Montel Jackson's gonna get this one done. I just think he's gonna be able to drop Gutierrez, and I think. I think he can just win the fight on damage. I think I just rate his power so much. I, I like. I think he can grapple as well. Like, I think he could grapple to a victory. He's not horrible on the ground. He's got a dash choke over Brian Kelleher. Yeah, honestly, I think he could probably even like mix it up, mix the grappling up in this fight. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Montel Jackson in this fight. But. Gutierrez is a live dog, always, you know, he's always tough, but yeah. Then we got Carolina Colaway Kicks versus Diana Bellabita. Now, this one is interesting. Not as a fight, but it is interesting. I'm going to be going with Carolina here. You know, Diana's not a horrible fighter, but like she losing to Liana Jujia is like sort of a bad look at this point because we realize Liana's really wasn't that good of a fighter. Now she's like an Instagram model, I believe, because uh, that's all I see her doing nowadays. Not complaining though. But I think, I think, uh, I think I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go with Carolina. She's on actually a pretty good run. And I remember her being on like a massive losing streak at one point. Like she was... She had lost to Andraj, Waterson, Grasso, uh, Jan, Pene, and it was looking like it was going to be it. Then she comes in, beats Felice Hereg, beats Gomez Jurez, beats Demopoulos, and now she's got Diana, and I think she's going to win. She's on the run of her career at 37 years old, only in women's MMA. But yeah, I'm going to go with Caroline. I think she gets this one by. I think she gets this one done by decision. Then we got Bill Algio versus Alexander Hernandez. I think stylistically this is a nightmare matchup for Alexander Hernandez. A long cardio machine like Bill Algio. Yeah, this this isn't gonna go good for Alexander Hernandez. I think we're gonna see Bill Algio just break Alexander Hernandez in this fight. Sort of similar to how Bill Quali- Billy Quilantero did Alexander Hernandez. I think he's just going to break him sort of like that. That's honestly how I see this fight going. Like, I, But I think he can have more success on the grappling. Like, I think he could just... We could see him, like, gassing out Alexander Hernandez with, like, clinch knees to the body, taking him down, and then, like, sort of ground and pounding him out. I can see him just... I can see him having Hernandez's back and just, like you know, ground and pounding him from the back. Like, I, I, I see that. I don't know why. Like, I just see that happening in this fight. You know, he beat Johannes and Brito. Brito is like a really underrated win. You know, Brito beat Diego Lopez, who everybody is so super hyped on, and Brito beat him on the Dana White Contender Series. Brito also beat... Uh, who's the other guy beat? He... Like, he, he's got some really good wins on his record. Oh, he beat uh, Shepe Mariscal in one of the most brutal KOs I've ever seen in 44 seconds. I thought Shepe was, like, dunzo in that. Like, he was brutal. You know, Brito is a really good win to have, and, like, Bill Algio beat him pretty convincingly as well. So I think I think he's going to break Alexander Hernandez here. I don't like Alexander Hernandez at featherweight. I don't know why he's doing this to himself. He should stay at lightweight, but... Like, he looked... He didn't... He didn't look the greatest against Jim Miller, but, you know, he, he didn't look horrible either. 
just, I don't know, it was, he was on his way to losing, but then he, he did sort of eye poke Jim Miller, so, which, yeah, it's a bit of a dog act, but I'm going to, I'm going to be going with Bill Algio here, I think he'll get this one done. And then we got Felipe Linz versus Ion Kutalaba. This is a tough one. This is generally a tough one. Felipe Linz is looking good nowadays. But, like, he's beating old men. Like, and arguably, in my opinion, I I thought he lost to Marcin Prakniar, if I'm being honest. Then he got chinned by Tanabosa. You know, he's been chinned quite a lot. Chinned by Vadim Nevnikov. Chimped by Kelba Silva. Got a knee injury against Kelly Ant. Anderson, and that, who the fuck is Kelly Anderson? Hmm. I thought it was going to be like some intergender match or something. Uh, he beat, he also beat Maxim Grisham, but you know, he's old, and I don't really rate a win over OSP at this point. You know, it's OSP and he's a lot older. And you know, obviously MMA math doesn't work, but Ion Kutalabin, like beat the shit out of Tanabosa, and Tanabosa actually brutally KO'd Felipe Linz. Not that that really matters, but I'm going to be taking... I'm going to go with Ion Kutalaba. He gets some of the worst fight IQ, so he'll probably mess this up somehow. But I think I think he can knock out Felipe Linz. But we will see. Also, Felipe Linz is 38 years old. Like, Obviously, it's light heavyweight, so you can get away with that. But it's crazy how old this guy is. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Ion Kutalaba here. I think he can just chat his way to victory is how I'm going to put it. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. But yeah, I'm going with Ion Kutalaba. And then we have Drew Dober versus Ricky Glenn. Uh, uh, so this is interesting. We've seen Drew Dober's chin get cracked by Matt Fravola. But we also seen Ricky Glenn's chin get cracked by Christos Gargios. Uh, and I rate getting your chin cracked by Matt Provola. And even then, he got knocked down, but he wasn't out cold or anything. But I generally, like, I don't know. It was weird how Ricky Glenn showed up against Christos. Like, he looked great against Grant Dawson. Arguably won that. Almost finished Grant Dawson. And now Grant Dawson's on a run and is main eventing this guard. It was really, it's, it was weird how he showed up against Christos. It's like he aged, like, 40 years in like a year it was really weird like it was weird it was out for all of 2022 as well so maybe we should have known but i think trudeau is going to knock him out cold like that crystal uh ricky glenn just showed up so slow against christos like he just looks so bad that i can't trust him to win trudeau is older than him as well which is weird to think about you know ricky glenn's been fighting for a really long time he's been fighting since 2006 like that, that is a very long time to be fighting in this sport. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go with Drew Dober. I think he's going to KO Ricky Glenn in brutal fashion. And then we've got Alex Morono versus Joaquin Buckley. Everybody is very confident on one Joaquin Buckley here, but I'm... Am I going to do it? I'm going to do it. I'm going with Alex Morono in this fight. Now, Joaquin Buckley... I don't know, he's just got a... Both of these guys have a chin problem, but I think Joaquin Buckley's just got a worse chin problem. This guy gets KO'd so much. Got KO'd by Johnny Gosh in, in uh, Bellator. He got head kick KO'd by Alessio De Chirico. Got right crossed by Kevin Holland. Got left... Cross to ground strikes by Chris Curtis. Like, this guy is just... I can't trust his durability. And I think Alex Morono generally got a really good fight IQ. Plus, also, at this point, I'm not rating a win over Andre Fialo at all. Like, generally, not at all. Like, it seems... I just... I don't know. I think Alex Morono can get this one done. Maybe... Maybe I'm wrong here, but he looked really good against Santiago Ponzinibbio. He did end up getting chinned, but he looked really good. He also looked really good against Matthew Semmelsberger, who was much more powerful. Not as technical as Joaquin Buckley, but, you know, he looked really good against that. Beat Mickey Gull, beat David Zawada, beat Cowboy Cerrone. Like, 
I don't know. I think I'm generally I'm I'm generally gonna go with Alex Mono here. I think he's gonna get this one done. And I think he can chin him. Like I generally think he can. Now this this could go really wrong. This isn't like a fight I'm confident on, but I don't think Joaquin Buckley is the lock everyone thinks he is. At the very least this is gonna be competitive, I reckon. Like I don't I don't I don't know. I don't rate Joaquin Buckley. I generally don't. But we'll see what happens, you know. But yeah, I'm going with Alex Moreno. I could live to regret this. There's going to be some famous last words, but we'll see what happens. Then we got Joe Pfeiffer versus Abdul Razak El Hassan. I'm going with Joe Pfeiffer here. I think he's going to... Honestly, I think he's going to run through Abdul Razak El Hassan here. Like, I think he's going to chin him. I think he's going to just put a beating on him with the hands. Like, I really like Joe Pfeiffer as a fighter. I think... I think this guy is actually really good. He's only 27 years old. And that's a middleweight. Middleweight's like the division where old men fucking can have careers until they're like 40s. Like we've seen Dan Henderson fight for a UFC championship at 46 at middleweight. You know, Joe, Joe Pife is hungry as well. He's the much hungrier fighter. And I, I just think he's better. That's another thing. I just think he's better than El Hassan. El Hassan, 5'10". Former welterweight, 38 years old, Joe Pfeiffer, 27. I just think Joe Pfeiffer can really just beat him up with the hands. Like, he's, he's got some really nice hands. I think he can mix it up to the body. And I, I think he can knock out Abdul Razak Al Hassan. Now, Al, Al, Al Hassan did beat Claudio Ribeiro, but do we really rate a win over Claudio Ribeiro at this point? Like, he, he his only win in the UFC was against Joseph Holmes. Like, Joseph Holmes isn't UFC level. And then besides that, you know, then he gets head kick KO'd by Roman Kopilov. Like, he doesn't really have a gas tank, Claudio Ribeiro. Especially if Abdul Ra Razak al Hassan is out carding on you. But yeah, I think Joe Pfeiffer has got this fight everywhere, and I think he will chin Abdul Razak al Hassan. I'll go second round, actually. I, th I think he'll gas out Al Hassan mixing it up to the body a bit, and then I think he'll get him out of there. And then we got the main event. We got Grant Dawson versus King Green, Bobby Green, legal name King. I'm gonna be going with Grant Dawson here. I just think this guy's on like a this guy's on a wild run. I would never have expected it. Like generally, especially after that Ricky Glenn fight, I thought, yeah, okay, this guy's done. But no. <laughs> no, he's not. He's on the rise. You know, he's only got one loss, which is a weird loss, is to Hugh Pulley, who's now 10-6, and six, who KO'd uh, him with a elbows in 35 seconds, which is crazy. But now, since then, you just look at the guys he's beat, you know. Julian Arosa, good win. Michael Trezano, not a bad win. Derek Minner. Mm, well, <laughs> we won't talk about him. Nad Naramani, you know, Paddy Pimlet couldn't beat him. Leonardo Santos, he broke the Leonardo Santos winning streak, but he was a bit older. Ricky Glenn, that Ricky Glenn performance, like I said, is such a weird one. I think that might be an anomaly performance there. Like, maybe his cardio is not that good. Maybe that's something we've got to worry about. But then, that was something I did worry about. And, but then afterwards, we've seen him get... Jared Gordon out of there in the third round. And we've seen him get Mark Madsen out of there in the third round. And then he just completely ran through Damir Ismagulov. Ismagulov. And he did it way better than Armin Tazukian did as well, which was really impressive. You know, Armin could barely get this guy down. Grant Dawson was getting this guy down at will. Like, it was actually crazy to see. And I... I think I think he can get Bobby Green down. I know Bobby Green's got a wrestling background. His wrestling isn't horrible, but I really do think Ricky. Gl uh, I was about to say Ricky Glenn. Jesus, I think Grant Dawson can get this one done. Now I do sort of worry if this fight does get extended. I can just see Bobby Green like teeing off on him in like the fourth round with a gassed out Grant Dawson going down. But I think he'll be able to just backpack Bobby Green. I think he can probably get a submission on Bobby Green as well. I don't know, I rate him really... I actually think Grant Dawson's good. I remember how we fought the next generation of lightweight. It was like... Uh, Guram Kutuledzi, Damir Ismagogulov. 
uh, who, who's the other one? Like, was it Gamera? I think it was Gamera, and then Amatazuki, and no, Grant Dawson is the next generation, the, the fucking Nebraskan, the Nebraskan is coming for the fucking belt. But yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be going with Grant Dawson here. Why why do they only give Bobby Green title fights? You know, against grapplers. Like I want to see Bobby Green in like a five round slugfest. You know, for a main event. Why do they give him like grapplers? They're trying to build up. Like Bobby Green's such a fun fighter. Do like Bobby Green versus like not at this point since that you know he's on a losing streak. But you could have done Bobby Green versus Brad Riddell as a main event. That would have been sick. But instead, we just gotta we gotta watch Bobby Green get fucking mauled by grapplers in main events. Like his two main events, Islam Makachev, a literal fucking Dagestani wrestler, and then Grant Dawson, a Nebraskan wrestler. Like it's I don't know, it's just unfair to Bobby Green. But yeah, you know, he's got a good chance if he, this fight gets extended. But I think I think Grant Dawson is gonna get him out of there by submission. But it's going to be real risky on the feet. I don't like Grant Dawson striking at all. Like, his striking is very shaky. Like, he, he got dropped by Mark Madsen. And he was getting pieced up by Jared Gordon as well. But I think we realized Jared Gordon's actually not got bad... He's not actually got bad boxing. Like, Jared Gordon was sort of boxing up Bobby Green in that fight. And Bobby Green's got some legit boxing. You know, as, as we've seen over Bobby Green's long extended career... But yeah, I'm going to be going with Grant Dawson here. I think he's going to get this one done by rear naked choke in the first round. But we'll see how it goes. Maybe Bobby Green can get this fight extended and then we'll be talking about the King Green fucking title run. How old is Bobby Green anyway? He's like 36, I, I want to say. 37. Okay. Oh, he's just turned 37, so that's good. Oh, no, no. Has he? Yeah, it has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's not bad. Hopefully Bobby Green doesn't retire after this. I want to see Bobby Green versus some more strikers, man. Like, Bobby Green's style is just so fun. But I think Grant Dawson gets this one done, and he continues his rise to the top five. Not something I thought I'd ever be saying. But anyway, if you've made it this far on this prediction video, make sure you give this video a like. If you're not already, subscribe and let me know your thoughts on my picks in the comments below. Let me know if you disagree with any of my picks or if you agree. You know, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.